to deal with the extraction that is at foot. It is the reason the financial markets are behaving the way they're behaving. That is a mathematical fact. I, this is not some opinion. This is a mathematical fact. We bring you the real stuff. And the fact of the matter is that there is a refusal on both the Democratic and the Republican side of the aisle to acknowledge the mathematical problem, which is that the United States of America is being extracted. It's being extracted through banking. It's being extracted through trade. And it's being extracted through taxation. And there's not a single politician that has stepped forward to deal with it. Streaming live on the web. People of the United States of America, your Congress is bought. Your Congress is incapable of making legislation on health care, banking, trade, or taxes. Because if they do it, they will lose their political funding and they won't do it. But I'm the President of the United States. And I will have a country that is run by a bot Congress. So I'm not going to work with a bot Congress and try to be Mr. Big Guy. I'm working with the bot Congress. I'm going to abandon the bot Congress like Teddy Roosevelt did. You're listening to Jacob. And I'm going to go to the people of the United States and I'm going to say, you've got a bot Congress. And until we get rid of the bot Congress, which is Jimmy Williams' constant point, which is get the money out of politics, and until a president says that's the problem and says he's going to fix it, there is no policy that I can possibly see, no matter how brilliant your idea may be, or your idea, or my idea, or her idea, or your idea at home. This is it. Is. That idea will not happen as long as there's the capacity to basically fire a politician who disagrees with me by taking funding away from him. Is that a fair assessment? Man, I love it. There's not a time when I play that or listen to that and I don't say, yeah, you remember that guy? That guy used to be on the TV. He used to have a TV show on MSNBC. His name's Dylan Radigan. His website, DylanRadigan.com. He's the author of a best time, uh, New York Best Times best-selling book, Greedy Bastards, and I just I love that. Well, uh, last week I caught a episode of The Daily Show with John Stewart, thedailyshow.com, and they had on there uh, Mr. Dylan Radigan. Come to find out he's literally like um, exactly. In, in his life where I would hope to be myself or move forward and what I want to do with Filter Free Radio and again, more uh, of showing real world examples of activism, of changing the world, of being the change rather than sitting around a circle and arguing about it or how we're going to do it. Here's the bit from, uh, part of the bit from The Daily Show. Easy access to fresh and healthy food is a challenge for millions of Americans. But some farmers in Southern California think they've solved the problem by using hydroponics. And they're even employing U.S. veterans to do it. We're able to deliver a much more nutritious, faster growing, tastier, and more robust. Wait a second. Uh, Hold on. I think I know this guy's bloated, angrier brother. <laughs> this is not some opinion. This is a mathematical fact. It's You're a, wasting now, valuable now, oxygen. Can we please cut off this man's microphone? He has no interest in answering my questions. No, that is You're Dylan Radigan from MSNBC. <laughs> but what's he doing here? There was very little incentive or desire from the left or right wing media apparatus uh, to actually resolve any problems. It became apparent that there was more value in working with veterans to deploy a high technology hydroponic organic farming system than there was in participating in a hollow political debate. Amen. That is what I'm talking it's about. It's not just enough to talk about it anymore. We have to get to work. Why sit around arguing with people in a circle when we could actually be building greenhouses? Basically, what you're looking at is a system that uses 90% less water, grows three times as much food, three times as quickly. What about the other side of that issue? What do those people think? What do you mean, other side? What do you, what do you mean, other side? <laughs> I, I love that. And then, um, uh, and he talks about a little bit about, uh, you know, the problems with MSNBC, the problems with the left right paradigm, the problems with uh, putting our love, hope, and faith in the things that are not worthy of our love, hope, and faith. And old McDonald had plenty of critiques for the state of cable news. It's too focused on feelings and not focused enough on facts. They'll book the same pundits that sort of can echo what they think. They'll use panels basically to make the audience feel that there are people like them. <laughs> Scott, I, I like that. You're wasting valuable oxygen. Cut that man's mic. He's, yeah. <laughs> He and, and Dylan Radigan was one of the very few people on TV, you know, like Keith Olbermann, who is willing to say, nah, man, this is some, this is some, sh you know, we got to take care of this stuff. Right? Uh, 
What would possess a New York Times best-selling author and the anchor of a daily television program to walk away from all his apparent success and commit himself to working with military veterans on a plan to develop high-yield organic farming? I don't want to give away too much, but let's just say it involves military veterans and hydroponic red bell peppers. Why sit around arguing with people in a circle when we could actually be building greenhouses? Welcome back to the show, Filter Free Radio, broadcasting live on filterfreeradio.com, our website. Also, the, ho- the home of Nicole Sandler, RadioOrNot.com. And here is, of course, the last week now, Dylan Radigan has been making the rounds. He's been on MSNBC with Martin Bashir. He's been on Current TV with the Young Turks. He's been on all sorts of uh, things, making the way, t- talking about Archie's Acres. Archiesacres.com is the, the new thing that Dylan Radigan is getting involved with. And by the way, check out his website, DylanRadigan.com, for his Community Hero Playbook and literally it t- step-by-step things on and how you can learn on what you should do now um, in getting involved, whether it's education, health, energy, food, community restoration. Um, check out DylanRadigan.com. Really cool stuff. But here is... Something from recently Dylan Radigan speaking uh, uh, that you did not see on TV, that you did not see on corporate uh, 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 filtered airwaves. And this is Dylan Radigan speaking at a San Diego convention that's on YouTube. Posted a link to this on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash filter free radio. Here's some real truth from Dylan Radigan talking about how he was naive about, you know, what he was doing until around... 2009, just a couple of years ago, when he woke up. It's obvious that I have been exposed to a lot of the truth and realities of both the incentives in our financial system, the incentives in our media system. I have been exposed to my own naivete in believing that a a direct interaction with the arms of power in our financial and media system may have some value if you use, if you manipulate the power that you have, and I had for periods of time significant influence within some of those communities, that if you use that in a certain way, that you can actually have a positive impact. In order to feel that that's an appropriate use of your time and energy, you have to have the belief that there are honest actors involved in the system, or at the very least, there are people who want to be honest actors involved in the system, and that given the opportunity to make better decisions or different decisions, that those decisions would even be considered. I was one of the people that was, that, that would largely describe my worldview, I would say, up until 2008 or not. When I first uh, got hired as the associate producer of the board op for the Tom Hartman program back in, you know, in 2000, late 2008, early 2009, um, I didn't know anything about politics, didn't care, wasn't interested, wasn't involved, wasn't aware. By the end of basically the first year uh, of working for Tom Hartman, um, I, I was definitely into the, you know, I'm, I'm pro-Democrat, you know, the progressives have the solutions, the, it's all the Republicans, they are the problem, they won't let the good guys do the good things, you know, our, our hands are tied, it's totally, you know, it's all about how do we get more Democrats elected, more progressives who are going to, you know, change the system from the inside. By the end of the second year that I worked for Tom Hartman, we were already doing filter-free radio, I was beginning to question, you know, more openly and have more conversations with my good friend Scott who I met you know during that time period in Washington DC used to be you know we we'd have these conversations I mean is it really uh, is that really the answer is is the Democratic Party really the solution is it or or do we need to get outside the system what's going on with this Occupy thing what's what's going on with these social movements outside the system that are and and then you know, by the by, the end of my third year working for Tom Hartman, uh, and uh, I only worked there for a little over, you know, three and a half years, almost four years. So by by the you know last year, six months that I was there, it was pretty obvious uh, to me what was really going on, and I had the revelation that Dylan Radigan was just talking about right there. You know. Um, and so Dylan Radigan at MSNBC had to quit his job and he had to stop pretending, you know, we don't know the, we got to stop pretending we don't know the answers. Uh, we don't know what the solutions are. So he's, Dylan Radigan saying, oh, you know, why am I wasting my time engaging in a, in a pointless, hollowed out conversation with uh, trying to convince the unconvincible of the obvious reality when maybe I should actually just go start doing start being the change start 
engaging in the activism and participating in what I'm looking for, actually being the change. And he talks about here a couple of things that he learned from his three years at MSNBC. And this is very important for any, you know, um, uh, anyone who's not willing to question their own uh, political party or anyone who's not willing to question themselves. Listen to this. By the time I got done three years at MSNBC, it was apparent to me that A, the solutions to pretty much all of our problems already exist. B, that the people who have the power to scale those solutions have no interest or economic incentive or media, and there's no incentive of any kind to do it. And that, that pretending that we don't know what the solution is, is the easiest way to perpetuate the system. And there's so many people stuck in that system. Here is, this is a long clip. Man, that is so brilliant. The, no, it gets if better. Think about that. It, that's it, that's the main, that's the corporate mainstream media in a nutshell. Yes, dude. Perpetuate and, the notion that we don't know what the solution is. Yes, <laughs> it it gets better, man. It gets better, and I strongly suggest you watch the video of Dylan Radigan giving this speech in San Diego that I posted on our Facebook page. It's a. Uh, part of a four-part series. I don't have time to play everything for you, but this clip right here, the next part, and I'm going to show you part of the video here next. This clip right here is, is the part where it's currently, right now, as I speak, this is currently changing my life. And Dylan um, talks about it right here. I love this. Come, having come to the end of my, my, the rainbow in terms of my previous efforts and realizing that there were not genuine actors involved and realizing that power for change is ultimately derived from the rate of vibration and that the, that the harmonics of how you vibrate are you vibrating in fear are you vibrating in anxiety are you vibrating in negative energy fields whatever that may be at the time or are you vibrating in positive energy fields so i was playing with the idea that it's not so much that we're a function of the outside world and what it's putting into us but that the outside world around us is a function of our collective vibration internally. That it's our internal rate of vibration that dictates the external reflection, not the external reflection that dictates the internal. For me, that was a revolutionary thought because that took me from a position of feeling relatively A, powerless, and, and B, overwhelmed, to feeling remarkably empowered because how I vibrate is a decision that I get to make exactly. all day, every day. Bingo. I don't get to decide what's on cable news. I don't get to decide how they build the cities. I don't get to decide really much of anything. But I do get to decide how I spend my time, who I spend my time with, the, the thoughts that I choose to think, and the words that I choose to use. That to me, which was a much smaller thought, if you will, relative to the sort of large thoughts that I was used to indulging my ego in as to how the financial legislation, the banking system has to be organized like this, not like that. The energy management system has to be like this, not like that. The healthcare management system has to be like this, not like that. And every, all, basically I had a lot of lists of things as to what all of you and quite honestly the other seven billion people need to be doing. And if they just do it, we won't really have a problem. <laughs> That's where the problem is, right? But I was, but I wasn't spending a lot of time thinking about what am I thinking from one minute to the next? How am I vibrating from one minute to the next? What words am I using from one minute to the next? What am I doing one minute from the next? And how am I being more a part of the solution than I am being a part of the problem one minute from the next? And that's exactly what I'm talking about. And also, ironically, uh, coincidentally, the same revelations that I'm having myself. And I started talking and we started briefly talking about on the last episode. I want to be doing more. I'm not stimulated enough sitting here and just talking about it. We need I need to be doing more. And that's what I'm going to be doing with the program and moving forward. And that's also what Dylan Radigan is talking about here. And again, this, is, this wasn't from the MSNBC conversation. This wasn't from the current TV conversation. This is from a YouTube video of him speaking at a Zeitgeist movement uh, chapter in San Diego last week on YouTube. So for what it's worth, it, it's, you know, you're getting a little bit more unfiltered truth here from Dylan Radigan. And I, this is what I'm talking about.